Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers from Fox 7 News on your side. in Austin, Fox 7 on your side. This is Fox 7 News at 10. It's a test too many people will have to take after tomorrow night's New Year's Eve celebrations. What happens when you fail? Good evening, I'm Stephanie Roshan. And I'm Dick Ellis. We'll have that story in a minute. But right now, we have some breaking news to tell you about. A man is dead after being hit by a train. It happened on Leaning O near Bannister Lane in South Austin. Fox 7's Kathleen Jennings joins us from the scene. And Kathleen, what can you tell us about it? Well, Dick, right now what I can tell you is investigators are still on the scene here in South Austin. I want to step out of the way and let you see the scene. We are here in South Austin, just off on Leaning Oak. And here's what we do know. Police tell us they received a call around 8.30 from a Union Pacific dispatcher saying that a train had hit a passenger. Apparently, a 38-year-old male fell asleep on the train tracks, and the train was unable to stop. Apparently, the conductor did try and blow the horn, but was an, unable to stop. Now, the name of the man has not been released. Police tell us they will release that after an autopsy is done. And they also tell us, police tell us, they don't believe the man is from Austin, but they do believe he is from Texas. They also tell us that alcohol may have played a factor in this accident. That's about all we know right now. We'll send it back to you. Okay, and I'm sure we'll get more details on this uh, tragedy tomorrow. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Well, tomorrow night at this time, you could be in jeopardy of committing a serious crime. But as Fox 7's Tony Lopez shows us, you won't want to pay the high price of driving while intoxicated. <laughs> If you're going to do this New Year's Eve and plan to drive afterward, this could be you. G-H-I. L-E-F-T-L-S-I-K. But failing a sobriety test could only be part of your troubles. You could end up killing someone. That's why police will be out in force for New Year's Eve on 6th Street and all over the Austin area. And what a price to pay if you get caught drinking and driving. In Travis County, you could face up to two years in jail, a $2,500 fine, not to mention a couple grand in attorney's fees, and forget about driving anywhere for one year. That's something to chew on before you down that next drink. Some New Year's partiers we spoke with do have the right idea. Well, it's going to be at these friends' house. In general, I don't get into a car if I'm too inebriated. And if I see someone else that's that inebriated, I try to get the keys away from them. Tony Lopez, Fox 7 News at 10. Well, the warnings come at a time when drunk driving fatalities are on the rise. But you don't have to be a statistic. If you have too much to drink this holiday season, please don't drink and drive. Call for a free, safe ride home. Seven on your side has this number to call. The rides are available now through New Year's Day from 7 o'clock until 3 a.m. Topping our look at world headlines tonight, the government wants to make airbags safer for you and your family. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says it will relax airbag requirements for new cars. Under the system proposed today, car makers could install weaker airbags. Also, you could decide to disconnect them altogether. 30 children and 20 adults have been killed by airbags. Parents, listen to this. If your child owns a Cabbage Patch Snack Time doll, you may want to take out the batteries. That's the word from the Consumer Product Safety Commission. The warning comes after some of the dolls started snacking on children's hair. The dolls are supposed to eat toy fries and carrots. And folks in Seattle just cannot escape the bad weather. 14 inches of snow that fell in the area yesterday is melting. And that means the streets are flooding. Flood warnings are in effect along the rivers in Washington and Oregon. More rain is in the forecast. Nine deaths are blamed on the weather. Well, our weather may include some fog and drizzle overnight. Troy has a look at what you can expect in our first look at weather. Troy? When you look at all that, really not that bad here locally. Visibility will be down in the morning across the area as a result of fog. Overnight tonight, we do expect that fog to develop. Let's go outside now and see that things are still looking pretty good out there now. But I do expect fog and drizzle to develop. Temperatures will be in the 50s and 60s by morning across our central Texas area. Not much of a cool down considering the time of year. We'll have more on your forecast coming up. Thanks, Troy. Well, it's just two days until the UT Longhorns have their duel in the desert. 
against Penn State and Arizona. Fox 7's Paige Gressett joins us now live from Tempe. Paige? Hey there, Dick and Stephanie. You know, this can be such a stressful time for head coaches, any kind of coach, but imagine how it is for their wives. We talked to Arlene Makovic. Of course, she is the wife of Texas head coach John Makovic. And these past few weeks in Arizona are proof that right before a bowl game, it can get rough. Do you have any sto stories on the saguaro cactus? Arlene Makovic is getting used to life in the Arizona desert. She knows quite a bit about cacti after being here for 10 days already. She also knows plenty about being wife to one of the country's top college football coaches, Texas head coach John Makovic, and the pressures of a college bowl game. His time is so uh, cut up at a bowl game where he has to appear, the press conference he needs to go to. Where at home, you know, he does it once a week on Monday and then after practice. He does kind of go in the cave a bit, uh, and we let him stay in the cave until he's ready to come out. <laughs> we don't go in looking for him. The Makovics are marking their 25th wedding anniversary this month. But what about New Year's? He'll literally fall asleep at 10.30, quarter to 11. And um, my daughter and I will probably toast the New Year in, <laughs> in the other room away from him. The Makovics have been in Austin now for five years, the longest they've been anywhere in his coaching career. And Arlene says, contrary to recent rumors, they plan on staying. Like Donna said, we are so happy in Austin. Um, we don't want to be any other place else. Texas is at the point where we really feel like we're going to contend now. As far as recruiting and, and all that, I, I think it's important they know we're staying right where we are. And as you heard Arlene talking about her daughter, she has a daughter that is about to graduate from another college besides Texas, if you can believe it. She says she wants to live in Austin also. They have a son who's going to UT, so the whole family enjoys Austin very much. Arlene also loves coming to these kind of events in another state because she gets to know the fans so well. And coming up in our special Duel in the Desert, we will take a look at some of those fans. And also coming up a little bit later in sports, Rick Carr and Dave Cody will be here to talk more about the Longhorns and what they've been doing today to get ready for the big game just hours away, literally. We'll see you then, Paige. Thanks. Well, she paid more than 300 bucks to get a house appraised. But this new home buyer claimed the work was never yeah. done. So she called seven on your side. Find out what happens next. And this is Dave Cody live in Tempe. We'll check out the Horns' final workout before Wednesday's game. And also, we'll preview our 1030 show, Duel in the Desert, when we see you later in sports, live from Tempe. Now from Fox 7 News, fighting for your rights with 7 on your side. She found her dream home and was ready to make the big purchase, but she ran into a few problems. She had to pay twice for an appraisal on her home, so she called 7 on your side. Fox 7's Kathleen Jennings tells us what happens next. First, Della Phillips paid $350 for an appraisal on this home. But when the loan fell through, she went to another mortgage company. There she had to pay for another appraisal because she says her first appraisal was never done, even though she had paid for it. Seven on your side yeah, stepped in and helped her get her money back from that first mortgage company. We got it. So we actually got the $350 for the appraisal. Makes you feel pretty good, huh? Yeah, especially right at Christmas. <laughs> that was terrific. You should only have to pay for an appraisal once, and typically it will cost you $325. You also need to make sure you do your homework on the mortgage company. I think how long they've been in business is a good idea, what the experience is. I also think you should ask for references of people that they've physically done loans for. Now there's a number you can call to check out mortgage brokers. Call the Texas Association of Mortgage Brokers. The phone number is on your screen, 467-0238. Now, if you have a consumer problem, you can write to 7 on your side, 119 East 10th Street, Austin, Texas, 78701. Big plans for New Year's Eve? Troy will let you know what kind of weather you will have to end the 1996 with a bang. Your New Year's forecast is coming up next. Holiday parties are a favorite tradition for everyone. Fox 7 is on your side with a holiday tradition of our own, a free safe ride home. If you or someone you know has too much to drink while celebrating the season, call 434-7788 for a free safe ride home. From Fox 7, 107.1 KGSR, 101X, and American Yellow Checker Cab.
There's no reason to drink and drive this holiday season. A safe ride home is a phone call away from Fox 7 on your side. This announcement is made possible by Russell Corman Jewelry. Fox 7 News, on your side. They're the people that help make Austin the great city it is. And Fox 7 News salutes them with the Fox 7 Person of the Week. Every Friday night on Fox 7 News at 6, Stephanie Roshan introduces you to someone who's helping to make Austin a better place to live. If you know of someone who deserves to be our Person of the Week, write or fax us here at Fox 7. Fox 7 News, on your side. Troy Kimball's weathercast carries the TV seal of approval of the American Meteorological Society and the National Weather Association. 96 is coming to a close on kind of a warm note. Oh, I thought that was going to be the high tomorrow. Yeah, right. You know, going to <laughs> it 96. could be. 97 is going to be a little closer to that. Uh, really, uh, no big changes to the remainder of the week. It looks like 96 will end up on a rather warm weather note across the area. It has all to do with the jet stream. Again, the uh, winds continue at high altitudes across the area, about 18 to 20,000 feet, right out of the west. This tends, again, to keep the cold air dammed up to the north, warm air to the south over a good part of the continental United States. This is also the reason, my friends, that you're hearing all the news lately about all the Pacific moisture, tremendous flooding, snow problems out in the west because this taps equatorial moisture out in the Pacific, brings it northeastward into the coast, and this pattern is likely to continue at least for the time being. Now, some interest is this. Over Texas, a little upper-level low sitting basically overhead, and that's kind of playing havoc with the forecast. It is going to make part of our area see dense fog in the morning, while some areas conceivably will have a clear sky. It's a little bit tricky. We'll keep an eye on it overnight for you, but Gordon Smith will have more for you tomorrow morning at about 5.30 as to uh, fog around the area. Now, you notice national radar, lots of precipitation in the west. This is falling into areas that are basically water, waterlogged, and don't need any more rainfall, but folks are likely to see it. Uh, some of the uh, Q, what we call QPF rainfall total forecast out here are in the three to four inch range over the next couple of days. And some of the elevated areas where you get more of a favored rainfall will see much heavier than that. Flash flood watches, and then you get above about seven or 8,000 feet. It turns into winter storm warnings where you get a couple of feet of snow. So this is really a mess. You can see the Pacific moisture streaming in. You can also see across Texas a little counterclockwise turn there. That's an upper level low. And by the way, on the east side of that tonight, some thunderstorms formed down around Palacios and Victoria, but they may have been off to the east of the area, not a major concern as far as we are concerned across the local area. Now, as we head through the next couple of days, tomorrow's forecast, we'll see some snow over the northern plains, but most of the nation will be warmer than normal. Thunderstorms over parts of the south. And then for tomorrow, look for highs in the 70s and 80s over a good chunk of the state of Texas. Tomorrow night, uh, we cross uh, on into a Wednesday, perhaps. We'll see, again, mostly fair skies in the central parts of the country. That's important for Tempe, Arizona. I think we'll generally see sunshine out there with high temperatures in the 70s as well as we go toward ball game time. Here in the Austin area, 10 o'clock, we have some clouds forming across the area now, but really a pretty nice evening live look from top of Franklin Plaza. But notice how close these two numbers are getting. 90% humidity, winds are calm. High today in Austin, officially 73, 47 our morning low, and precipitation course, none recorded. Our Fox 7 weather trackers from across the area checking in mainly with 60s to uh, around 60 degrees. LaGrange at 67 at this hour up at Marble Falls, 57, 58 in Johnson City, around 60 here in the capital city. Now, as far as the satellite picture is concerned, again, you can kind of catch that upper level low right overhead. Some thunderstorms down to the southeast. For us, you've seen the forecast before. Our forecast for Austin overnight tonight, we're going to go for a low temperature of 58, low clouds, drizzling fog in some areas. And some of you wake up tomorrow morning maybe off to the east and maybe see partly cloudy skies, light southeast winds overnight. Then for tomorrow, we're calling for a little morning drizzle fog, a little sun in the afternoon, high tomorrow about 76, and tomorrow night's low about 59, a little drizzle and fog developing across the area, and the winds will be light from the south and from the southeast. Here, my friends, is your extended forecast. The uh, front is on the way for the weekend. Could bring a thunderstorm with it. Before it gets here, though, highs in the 80s, mm -hmm. Thursday mm -hmm. and Friday. Not that much colder with that front over the weekend. Way to start the year in Texas, huh? <laughs> hey, it's typical, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. thanks, Troy. Well, Texas Tech's Byron Hansford says God has revealed to him whether to go pro. And Fox 7's team coverage of the Fiesta Bowl rolls on. Rick Carr and Dave Cody join us live from Tempe, Arizona. Well, Stephanie and Dick, we're going to hear from a former Heisman Trophy winner. Get his thoughts on the big game Wednesday. And just two days away from kickoff, the Longhorns took to the practice field for a final time. We'll find out if one of their key players was there. All that, we come back live to Tempe in just a moment. Now, live from Phoenix, Arizona, Fox 7 News coverage of Fiesta Bowl 96. Doom in the desert. Oh, 
continue their workouts in the Valley of the Sun. And Fox 7's team coverage of the Fiesta Bowl preparations continues. Randy Sumner's in the studio with us tonight. And it's going to be an exciting night indeed. Fox 7's Dave Cody and Rick Carr are live right now at the Buttes Mountaintop Resort in Tempe, Arizona. Rick, Dave, what's going on out there today? Well, it's another beautiful, cool evening, in fact, Randy, here at the Buttes. Uh, that, in fact, Sun Devil Stadium back uh, in the distance behind us. Uh, dark tonight, but uh, the Horns will get their first look tomorrow, uh, most of them, uh, those who did not participate in media activities when they take a walk through the stadium. But their final practice was today. Yeah, something to be thankful for, the nice weather. Another thing that Texas players are thankful for, they don't have to practice anymore. They can think about playing a football game. This afternoon at Mountain Point High School in Southern Phoenix, they took to the practice field for the final time. And good news for Texas fans, number 83, Mike Adams, was, a, was there. John Makovic's star receiver was limited in drills on Sunday because of a recurring hamstring and groin injury, an injury he first suffered in the A&M game. But Adams took full part in this afternoon's practice and planned to be in Wednesday's game against Penn State, the game that he does not intend to be kept out of. Now, before practice today, Texas coach John McAvoy helped kick off a youth football clinic here in Tempe. Some 500 area kids learned the basics of the game from local high school coaches, everything from passing to blocking and tackling. A couple of former Heisman Trophy running backs, Oklahoma's Billy Sims and Nebraska's Mike Rozier, talked to the kids about football and to us about Texas and Penn State. You got a couple of running backs, Ricky Williams, who I oh, know yeah. you've seen from Texas. Oh, yeah. Curtis Dennis, I don't know if you've seen him. From oh yeah, State. oh yeah. I, I know Coach Joe very well, so I watch both of those teams, and uh, I'm looking forward to be a pretty close ball game. Really, real physical. You know, Penn State always known for being a physical team, so uh, it's, it's going to should be a good game. Well, another former Heisman Trophy winner, Earl Campbell, was invited to attend, <laughs> but the Earl's in big demand this week here in Tempe. He was uh, probably on a radio show Making somewhere. Making sausage, te selling his Earl Campbell sausage. He's somewhere. selling plenty of that. Well, we'll be back, of course, uh, see you at 1030 with our Duel in the Desert as we preview again Wednesday's matchup. Randy? All right. Thank you very much, Dick, Dave, and Rick. Thank you very much. And what was easily the best college bowl matchup before New Year's Day, the eighth-ranked Colorado Buffaloes met up with number 13 Washington tonight in the Holiday Bowl. And it's been a wild one. Second quarter, after Colorado scored a touchdown on an interception, Huskies return man Jerome Payson takes the kickoff. He's going to take it all the way back 87 yards. No one's going to touch him all the way down the sideline. He's going to run it in for the touchdown. And the Washington Huskies took the lead at 21-14. But then Coy Depper went to work. Watch him here as he drops back, finds the open man in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Detmer with a beautiful touch. He's got a pro career ahead of him, just like his big brother. Colorado leads by score 27-21 in the fourth quarter. Saying the Lord told him to do it, Texas Tech running back Byron Hansbart announced today that he'll be leaving Lubbock to enter the NFL draft. The junior rushed for 2,084 yards this season, earning the Doak Walker Award as the nation's best running back. Hans Bart is also a Pentecostal minister, and his decision had quite a bit to do with his ministry. And the reason that I'm doing that is because the, you know, there's a big arena out there, and the Lord is on his way back. And it's a lot of people out there that really don't know who Jesus is. And football, as far as the NFL, is a bigger platform for Byron Hansport to spread the word of God. He's had a lot of great Saturdays. Uh, he spread a lot of goodwill. He spread a lot of, uh, a lot of joy to a lot of people. If you missed Jason Kidd's cameo appearance at the Suns uniform Saturday, you're out of luck. The point guard, who was shipped to Phoenix in a six-player swap with the Dallas Mavs, has been placed on the injured list. He's expected to miss four to six weeks. Tests today revealed a hairline fracture to his right collarbone. The Rockets hosted the Sonics tonight at the Summit, and the Rockets get it done. Matt Maloney from the outside scored it will. The Rockets come away with the big victory, 99-91. to Meanwhile, the Spurs lead Vancouver 50-37 to in college hoops tonight. Kansas gets Jock Vaughn back. He plays well, and they went big over Division II Washburn. All right. Busy night. Thank yeah. you, Randy. Troy has a final look at your forecast when we come back. Stay with us. Rather humid overnight. We expect some fog across the area first thing tomorrow morning. Gordon will be along with you first thing in the morning to let you know how that works out. But visibility could be down in the morning, so you want to take care. Now, overnight tonight, wake up weather. I'm still calling for a little fog and drizzle. Temperatures in the 50s and to around 60 degrees. Thanks, Troy. And thank you for joining Fox 7 News tonight at 10. Coming up in just two minutes, our Fox 7 special, Duel in the Desert. We'll head back out live to Arizona where the Longhorns are gearing up for their bowl game. Have a good night. Close captioning of Fox 7 News is brought to you by Motorola. 
Now, live from Phoenix, Arizona, Fox 7 News coverage of Fiesta Bowl 96, Duel in the Desert. It began as the season, a season of fulfillment, a season that dared dream of a national crown. Dreams, however, can quickly become nightmares. A costly turnover, a lost opportunity, a kick sailing true. A lesser team may have fouled, broken, but the Texas Longhorns are no lesser team. And in what may be the greatest call in Texas history, a new era was born. The Nitty Lions also held national dreams, and while they stumbled, they now look to prove their membership in the national elite. Texas versus Penn State. The duel of the desert starts here. Everybody, welcome to Duel in the Desert. Uh, just two days away now before the Longhorns and the Lions kick it off. Rick Carr joining Dave Cody here at the Buttes Hotel, the Players Hotel. They are safely, uh, safely tucked away tonight. <laughs> but we're ready to bring you for the next 15 minutes a preview of Wednesday's big Fiesta Bowl between Texas and Penn State. See, coming up on tonight's show, we'll hear from Paige Gretzett. She'll introduce us to some of the Texas Longhorn fans who are already in town. We'll hear from several of the team's seniors, the kind of game they'd like to have in their final college career, and an interview with one of the Texas Longhorn senior running back, Priest Holmes. But first, let's take a look at today's practice. The Horns' final workout, in fact, is they will just do a walkthrough at the stadium tomorrow. Uh, all eyes today on Mike Adams, the Horns' top receiver and punt returner, who complained of a sore groin and hamstring yesterday, but he appeared okay this afternoon, and quarterback James Brown says he will uh, look for his favorite target to be in the lineup against Penn State. He's been going for two days. He practiced both times, and Mike's been here for five, six years. I mean, there's no need for him to practice that much, and his hamstring's hurting a little bit, but he, as soon as he feel all right, he'd get out and go work out, you know? I mean, he could have took yesterday off and just practiced the day and tomorrow, and he'd have been all right. Uh, but he's been just working out constantly. Now, Mike Adams is one of 17 Texas seniors and 10 starters who will be playing in their final college ball game Wednesday when the Horns meet Penn State, and many of these seniors have big plans for their final college game. Five years ago, they came to a Texas team nowhere near the nation's elite. But players like Mike Adams, Tyson King, and Dan Neal helped bring the Longhorns back. Now they're getting ready for an emotional farewell. Dan Neal playing He's kind of upsetting to me. I love every year that they're Texas. And, uh, to play the last game for UT is kind of tough. I'd come back if they let me, but they won't let you do five years. It's been a great career. It's been a great, great ride here at Texas. So uh, I'm proud of how everything turned out and where the program's at right now. For some, the finality of Wednesday's game with Penn State hasn't yet hit home. Until after the game, until, you know, the game is finally over, I'm finally off the field, I'm finally out of my pass. I, that's when I think it'll sink in, like, those are my last college games. But others are already dreaming of a Fiesta Bowl fantastic finish. Sean I want to kick off the turf. That's all I want. Kick off the turf. That daddy or about two minutes left in the game. Really victory. Hand it off, Holmes. Good block! What do you think your emotions are going to be like as you're out there and as the game winds down? I think they're starting to boil up right now. Boil up. It's going to be kind of like that mound. It's about to explode, I think. You know, how would Priest Holmes like to cap his career there? Uh, another MVP, of course. <laughs> Tyson King capped his career with... You know what it's going to be. The interception. The interception. <laughs> Just one time, please. One time. That's all I asked for for Christmas. So, that's all I want. Boy, I hope Santa Claus brings that to Tyson King late. He dropped a sure one against A&M, dropped one against Nebraska, and then he finally got that one. And, of course, Texas was offside, so it didn't count. He has been dying for an interception. Maybe, just maybe, Santa Claus will bring him one against Penn State. What a fitting way to end his college career here at Texas. When we come back, Paige Gresset of Fox 7 News joins us. She'll visit with some Longhorn fans who are here to spend their New Year's Eve and their New Year's Day in Tempe. Stay with us. Duel in the Desert rolls on live from Tempe. Welcome back to our special Duel in the de Desert coverage. We are here at the Buttes Mountain Resort where the Longhorns are staying and they're playing and they're yelling because they're getting excited. A couple of them have walked by here. I'm Paige Gresset. We're having a great time here. There are lots of fans here. If you go around this hotel, you see signs of Texas literally everywhere at the Buttes. Take a look. You can see how beautiful it is here. Some of the cactus, they have lights all over them. The employees here, including the ballet parkers, yes, they are wearing Texas clothes. That probably makes for some pretty good tips, don't you think? And, of course, a lot of UT fans are staying here, like the family that has Longhorn flags all over their cars. 
Also, some Austin radio sportscasters are making this place home. Now, Texas fans may be here, but it's a little bit early in the week, and Texas fans are not all over Tempe, Arizona, just yet. I've been a Longhorn fan ever since I was a kid. I was at the Notre Dame game. Texas should have won it. They're going to win this one. They're going to win it, baby. This is great. We, we uh, made a big ball game. You know, we shouldn't have. We lost some four games, but... Uh, it's great that we uh, we were able to pop the Nebraska win, and uh, well, we're going to have to destroy Penn State. <laughs> Here in downtown Tempe, there are signs that the Horns are taking on Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl, but you have to keep in mind ASU is also headed to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Oh, uh, it's great because there's still quite a few ASU people here, and uh, we haven't left yet for the Rose Bowl, so we're still mingling with those people. I'm not much into that college football, like NFL, better. I'm just not into it. But you're out here selling all this college stuff. Well, it's because it's from a business for my dad, then, and I don't have a choice, so. Okay, so not everybody has Longhorn fever just yet, but you can guarantee they probably will. A plane load full of Texas alums arrived today. More are coming tomorrow, and there are already fans all over town, although it is kind of quiet still. And we are looking forward to that because there's a parade tomorrow, there's a blog party, so many things going on for New Year's Eve. And coming up next, Dave Cody is going to have an interview with one of the Longhorn players. Stay with us. We're right back with more Jewel in the Desert. And welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. Dave Cody back with Jewel in the Desert. You know, uh, the Horns are in their second week now here in the desert as they've been preparing to meet Penn, Penn State on Wednesday. And I tell you, they are really ready to get it on with the Nittany Lions. One in particular is Texas running back Priest Holmes. He joined us last night here on the set. Uh, Penn State now just a couple of days away. Uh, are you guys focused on football? You've been out here nine days. I think we've gotten a chance to get back focused. I know when we first came out here, a lot of guys were good, and why are we out here so long? But now it's time to focus in. It's getting close to the Wednesday, so everyone's kind of relaxing, and mental momentum is coming back up again. James Brown hands it off to Priest Holmes, trying to read his blocks up the middle, big room, he could go! 40! 30, 20, 10. See you later. Touchdown, Priest Holmes. Priest, you were the secret weapon in the Nebraska game. Right. It was something Coach Makovic, uh really used effectively. It was your inside running three touchdowns right. in the game. Now you're not so secret anymore. Penn mm -hmm. State's going to know when they see number 33 in there. Definitely. Well, how does that affect you going into the game? I, I think it really doesn't have too big of an effect because one of my main goals is just to stop the defensive ends and the linebackers. So whatever I get from that is extra, always. That's it. This offense was so explosive uh, against Nebraska. you feel like it, it hadn't missed a beat even though it's been a month? I don't think it has, especially with James Brown. Cause he definitely puts you out there with them bold statements and says how much we're going to win by. When you got a quarterback leading us like that, it, it gets the whole team fired up. What's he saying this time? Has he told you guys anything? He hadn't told us. He, 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 he hasn't told us either, but I can see it in his eyes. He's ready to win. All right, Texas senior running back Priest Holmes win is a Longhorn career, if you can believe that, on Wednesday against Penn State. And how good that career could have been had he not suffered a knee injury uh, early in his career at Texas. But Priest Holmes has uh, really come on strong. And as you mentioned in your piece earlier, Rick, in the sportscast, the MVP of the Sun Bowl, One. the MVP of the Big 12 championship game, he would like to add a third on Wednesday, a nice, the MVP of the Fiesta Bowl. A nice triple crown that could be. There's a triple crown of big events coming up tomorrow here in Tempe, Arizona. Here's a look at some of the things the Horns and the fans will be looking forward to on Tuesday. Texas players and the Penn State players will get a look at the Sun Devil Stadium turf. Both teams get a half an hour to walk through the stadium field, gearing up for Wednesday's game. The head coaches, Joe Paterno and John Makovic, will have their final press conferences. Yes, one more time to talk to their big friends in the media. And it's the big event everybody, as far as fans are concerned, are waiting for. It's the Fiesta Bowl Block Party. That's where they take over an entire area of downtown Tempe, several hundred thousand fans. Celebrating the new year and a couple of nice bands, Delamitri and the Jim Blossoms, two of your favorite. That's we'll be right. here to uh, entertain the masses. Jim Blossoms, right here in right Phoenix. Here in Phoenix. Phoenix. By the way, we invite you to join us as we've been talking about tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Austin time for our one-hour Fiesta Bowl special, Duel in the Desert. Coach John Makovic will give us a one-on-one -on -one inter interview tomorrow, to the eve of the game, to talk about, of course, the matchup with Penn State. Mark Wongren of the American Statesman will be with us, and Bill Schoening, the voice of the Longhorns. How many times have we heard that call? Many times. And we can't wait to hear it again. We invite you to join us tomorrow for five, uh, 6 and 10 o'clock reports as well. For now, Rick Carr, Dave Cody, thanks for being with us in the Duel in the Desert. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.